So right now I'm calling Chase because uh, I resubscribed to Photoshop and that's not what I wanted to do. And I did that less than an hour ago. This call will be monitored and recorded and your voice may be used for verification. Before we connect you to a customer service specialist, please enter your debit card, account number, or user ID, followed by the account. You have been selected to take part in a brief survey about your service. Erica was sick. I'm sorry, what is your name again? My name is Sanidi. Okay. All right. And uh, how are you doing today? That's none of your business. That's not the kind of call that this is. This is a service call, and I'm not here to chat with you about how I'm doing. I'd like to get to the point, please. Okay. How may I assist you? Thank you. And in a world where things are efficient, especially in America, and there's self-serving service, and uh, we're, you know, Americans are very self-efficient, and they like efficiency, maybe it's best not to ask, how are you, and say, how may I help you? Doesn't that make more sense? I don't know you. You're a stranger. I'm not going to talk to you about how I feel. That's really none of your business. You should be able, you should be, as, a, as I've worked in customer service for a very long time myself, I never asked, how are you? I always said, how may I help you? It's a little off-putting, it's a little off-putting, especially because I know you're, uh, you know, you're not a legitimate Chase representative. It's a little off-putting off while I'm being harassed and uh, terrorized through my devices. You're asking me how I am. Now, maybe that's part of your tactic to uh, further distress and trigger. Um, but I'm also going to, uh, in that case, I'm just being real and maybe giving you a pointer uh, should you ever get a legitimate customer service job. And uh, with the way you answer the phone, hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. How may I help you? That's it. It's none of your business how I'm doing. It's none of your business how I feel. You're not doing, you're not being sincere. You don't really care. And I'm sure as hell not gonna tell you. And this is not, you're not my friend. I don't trust you as it is. So the correct way to answer the phone as a customer service representative in America, where people are practical and efficient and no nonsense. We keep shit real here. Maybe not you con artists, but most Americans, real Americans, and anyone who's real, uh, keeps it real. And that is, how may I help you? What can I do for you since you are calling Chase Bank? We are not here to chat. And uh, if you don't mean what you say, don't say it, which is, how are you? We're not friends. So getting back to the point, uh, I just made a... Uh, a purchase 
for $22, $22 through Adobe website. And uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I, I, I didn't mean to purchase the software online. So I'd like to cancel that. And I did that less than an hour ago. Okay, this call will be monitored or recorded. Can you help me with your address on file for authentication? 2828 42nd Street, Apartment 5D is in DOG, Astoria, New York, 11105. Thank you for being Give me one moment here while I check the details. Okay, so regarding your account, I'll have to get you connected to our team. At what what de excuse me what department are you transferring me to customer protection group why do i need protection when all i want to do is cancel the transaction that i made with my debit card less than an hour ago at this, mo at this moment what i see is um, on the account there's a note that is here for assistance on your account this is the department who will be helping you further so I will have to get you connected to them so that you will, you will be assisted further. So should I get you connected now? I guess so. Uh, well, if not now, when? I mean... I... So you asked for the reasons I was explaining. Right, and then you explained it. And then just connect me, ma'am. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not here to uh, hold... And I'm not here to, you know, I don't, you have terrible customer service skills. So the correct thing should have been, let me give you another lesson, if I may. So you could have said, this is not for me to handle. Um, let me transfer you to, to the correct person or quote unquote department that handles this situation. May I go ahead and do that? And that's it. I did ask you why, because I know you love to transfer. And, you know, this is already turning into uh, probably a 20 minute phone call. And I maybe you don't have a life and this is your life just holding and transferring and trying to keep, you know, people on the phone so that you could talk about feelings and all that. But I actually do have a life where at least I don't want to be on the phone. Uh, I'm not a loser. And uh, talking to strangers, that's not I'm, I don't go to chat rooms. I don't go to America's hottest chat line. I don't need to do that. If I want to talk to people, I can just, whatever. I have ways of meeting people if I want to talk to people. I don't have to be on the phone with strangers. So I'm just saying there's efficiency, there's a way of efficiency, and there's a way of communicating that, um, one, you don't have to have dead space between the client and yourself. And it should be, it, it's customer service skills. You should be able to pick up social cues and uh, lead in the direction of, okay, in, a, in the most courteous, efficient manner, I'm going to transfer you to someone who can handle that. And uh, you don't have to wait for me to say, okay, yeah, go ahead and do that. It's, it's just not necessary. If that's what it takes to get this transaction canceled, so be it. You're asking me when. How? Well, I'm on the phone with you now. So just do it now. I don't have to hold your hand and say, yes, go ahead and transfer me. You said, you're going to have to transfer me. So I, what, 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 I simply asked why. You don't have to wait for me to say, yes, okay, great explanation. Go ahead and make that transfer. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, please stay on the line. I'll get you connected to the current department. We can call you back when it's your turn. You will not lose your place in line if you choose to use this service. To receive a call back, press 1. To remain waiting, press 3. We're sorry, that is not a valid entry. Thank you for calling. All of our customer service specialists are assisting other callers. 
rather than wait, we can call you back when it's your turn. You will not lose your place in line if you choose to use this service. To receive a call back, press 1. To remain waiting, press 3. Welcome to Chase Broad Operations. We take pride in providing you with excellent service. So right now what they're doing is they listen to your tone of voice and if they hear you raise your voice or if they interpret it at all as like excitable, they're going to try to exacerbate the situation. So she just transferred me to the fraud department, even though that's not the point of my call. I simply wanted to cancel a transaction. And what I'm going to do is I'm going through my photo booth videos. And I'm going to show how all these calls, Chase calls, PayPal, uh, T-Mobile, Con Ed, Verizon, all have the same automation. And uh, it's exactly the same process. It's literally designed to stress you out and to uh, um, aggravate you, to get on your nerves. And what she did was transfer me to the fraud department, um, even though that's not at all the reason why I called. And they did that on, on deliberately. And I know that because I've been dealing with them for so long, and they know that I know all about them. So they're trying to work me up and get me, you know, trigger. They know I have complex PTSD, and uh, they get kicks out of that. They find that funny. So, you know. The best defense really is to stay calm. Um, they interpret the slightest little nuance of your voice as like, oh my God, yes, she's going to get, she's going to, you know, she's about to explode. But um, really, you know, I'm expressive. I'm not a stoic person. Um, I have a good sense of humor. I can laugh at myself. Uh, I get blustery if I, you know, uh, for a minute and then I, I, I deflate and I forget about it. I don't hold grudges. I'm not an angry person. And if anyone has, if, uh, is justified at being angry, it's me. So I'm going to cancel. I'm going to hang up that call because they're going to keep me on the phone for a very long time and I'm calling again. That's heard on every single call, even the uh, scam calls. So I'm going to do this again, but most likely I'm probably going to have to call tomorrow. Eric Kowisik, and what is your name again? Brittany. Brittany? Yes. Okay. How may I help you today? Oh, you must have heard my last conversation. So I made a transaction um, about an hour ago on Adobe website, and I didn't mean to purchase a new uh, software. And I'd like to cancel it. And I called uh, just a few minutes ago, but the person transferred me to the wrong department. And uh, this is not a fraudulent purchase. 
I simply want to cancel the purchase I, I just made. Does that make sense? We can't cancel a purchase you made. You have to contact the merchant to try to cancel it with them. Well, they're probably most likely going to tell me to contact the bank. I know um, I, I'm aware of how you guys work, that you're going to just ping pong me back and forth to each other. So usually they say, call the bank, because we're not going to be able to cancel. Isn't that the case? We can submit a claim, but a claim is not a guarantee of you getting your funds back. We can't reverse the transaction. We can submit a claim, but that still goes through the claims process. Okay, um, maybe I'm not making myself clear. So I accidentally per I understand exactly what, what you're saying. Why don't you say why don't you, why don't you say in your words what I'm asking from you? You say you made a purchase on Adobe, that, but you were not trying to purchase the software. So you wanted that transaction to be canceled. That's a debit card transaction we cannot cancel. The only thing that we can do is submit a claim for you. And what is that claim? What is the purpose of the claim? If it's not an, un un it's not an unauthorized purchase, it's just simply uh, a, an accident. So yes, I could call Adobe uh, and see if I can get a refund, but typically they just say to call the bank. Isn't that you, the way you guys work? I mean, I don't know what that merchant, what their guidelines are for the, you purchasing software. I'm not sure what their return policy is or their cancellation policy is, so I'm not sure about that, but I can only tell you what we can assist you with, and that'll be submitting a claim. We can't cancel the transaction for you. It's not an ACH transaction where we can do a stop payment. If you would have used your account and routing number, then we could have submitted a stop payment, but this is a debit card transaction, so we can only submit a claim. Okay, but claims are for unauthorized purchases, right? No, not necessarily. Okay, well, maybe For I'm. Different claim reasons. Maybe I'm not. Um, well, I, I was under the impression claims are for uh, fraudulent purchases, but if you're suggesting a claim and that's the only way to go about and do it, uh, so yeah, so I see that it's for twenty one seventy six. Um. Okay, yeah. Can you um, make a submit a claim for that, please? So, um, the reason for your claim, you basically will be customer change mine, canceled or return order. So, um, I'll get you connected with our claims department. You can let them know you want to submit a claim for this transaction. Okay, and one, how long is this? How how much longer is this phone call going to be? Do you think? Because I know that. Typically, phone calls with you guys can run anywhere from like 20 minutes to over an hour. And uh, well, I'm not sure if the claims department have a hold or not. I'm not sure what their hold time is to speak with the representative with the claims department, but it shouldn't be long to stop an actual claim. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh -huh. My pleasure. So I'll go ahead and connect you over to the claims department now. Please hold for transfer. you with excellent service and look forward to speaking with you. The time to speak with a customer support specialist is greater than 15 minutes. So whenever cancellations of any sort or claims, they really uh, test you and uh, make sure you work for your cancellation and your, your claim. It's only $21, so I don't really care. Um, and I'm not going to deal with them for the rest of the evening. It's already kind of, I'm not in the mood to deal with con artists right now. So, um, but this is a good phone call because it shows uh, even just the music that came on after Brittany talked, was on the phone. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the kind of music I, one, banks don't normally Banks are sober places. Uh, they respect their clients, and uh, they don't usually have hold music at all. And you don't usually have to be on hold um, 
there's they're very efficient institutions. So, and the reason for that is because it's about trust. It's a financial institution where you're holding your money. So it's not like you know the bank is doing me any favors. Um, so, uh, but if you listen to that phone call now, I was pretty upfront without being snarky. I let her know I cut to the chase and called Chase. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. I, I cut to the chase and directly called my bank because if I were to connect with Adobe, which um, I'm being stonewalled every time I call Adobe, but if I were to, and that's a first because I've called Adobe before and I've always connected to a representative, but um, even if I were able to connect to a representative, most likely that person's going to say, we can't cancel. You're going to have to call your bank. And that's just the repeated pattern of all these complaints. So I, I was, you know, because I'm so familiar with how they work, I just called the bank first. And I thought that there, there was a way that, um, the way that it was explained to me before was uh, with the unauthorized, with the fraudulent purchases was something like if you had caught them sooner or something, we could have, uh, it, it, the point it, the, the, made by the representative was so long as you catch things very quickly, we can reverse or whatever. And that's what I thought was possible tonight, but um, I guess not. And then, uh, you know, the point of the, uh, I, I want to show, or uh, of this phone call, of these calls tonight, was that it takes a very, it's a, it's a long process. It's an ordeal, and it's designed to be that way, to be painstaking, to uh, grate on your nerves, and to, uh, because I'm trying to cancel a payment that's going to Adobe, and, you know, they, it's all one criminal network. So they try to make it as painful as possible, everything from hold times to um, the music that's your, that you're subjected to and uh, the runaround process. And that's just um, in every single complaint. 